In this video, I will show you how to assemble this carbon shaft cutter. It is used to make archery arrows and it can probably be used to make crossbow bolts as well. The parts are 3D printed. The model files and a description of all the required materials can be found in printables. Link is going to be in the description below. This is a low cost alternative to the commercial units you can purchase. Uh, it's at least half the cost of uh, the big units and you have pretty much the same features simple diamond cutting wheel here and uh, attachment for your vacuum cleaner so you can remove the carbon dust if you would like to know how to assemble this unit just keep watching and to find out more please check in the description below you'll find a link to the printables page Let's start by assembling the cutting wheel housing. For that you need three 3x12 three screws and the two halves. The way it's oriented is with the outlet for the vacuum attachment is towards the back, so it's facing away from you. And then the wheel just goes through here. And then just close the other side up. And then add the three screws. It doesn't matter which side you screw them in from. Oh, um, what I suggest is use the vacuum adapter. Add that now and make sure it just helps keep everything together. And then just add the screws. You don't over tighten this, you just want this closed. Plastic coming out. Okay. Then, if you have plastic coming out like it is here, just take it off. Okay, don't over tighten this, you just want this to stay together. You don't need to crush anything. Okay, last one. Uh, you only need to add th these three screws. This hole right here is from development. It'll probably be removed on the final release. It's not needed. Okay, and that's it. If you're cutting at the diamond disc in here, it's free. You can still access the screw from this side, but that's it. Okay, now for the next step, uh, make sure you already have the motor mounted to the metal bracket. Having the chuck on at this point is not really necessary but I would just assemble the whole thing. And you'll need the uh, M3 by 25 screw. You'll also need a M3 washer and the flange nut, also an M3. I already have the motor mounted with one screw on this side so I'm just gonna add the second one. This is a little bit fiddly because there's not a lot of room between the motor here and where the nut goes. But just attach this part. Since there's not a lot of room, the way I like to do it is screw the screw in so it just clears the metal mount of the motor. That will give you enough room to hold the flange nut in place on top of the screw. I'm just using 
pliers to put it on top. Right, a little more. Also helps if you don't tighten all the uh, tighten all of the screws right away. You can just slide the motor over a little bit, gives you more room. Okay, it's on top now, and I should be able to. Oh. Now I can push it down with one finger, and then hopefully, yeah, get underneath it, and screw it in further. Okay. Uh, don't tighten them all up. You still want the motor move to move because you later on you need to align the housing and the cutting wheel with the motor. So just make sure that they're holding and they're on and that's all you need for this step. Next we will attach the part from step one to the main base. For this we need three by thirty screws. I only have three by four. Three by forty screws so I just uh, cut a centimeter off the front. That works as well. So for that I just I like to uh, insert them a little bit and makes it easier to assemble or to line up the part. So. I'm just going to drive the screw in until the tip comes out. That makes it easier to uh, line it with the base. I'm going to do two. We don't need the vacuum adapter anymore since we already have the uh, two parts screwed together. So let me take this off. Now make sure your truck is open far enough for the axle to, in, to, to, to go in there. And just align the screws or just put the part right on top of the four holes. Okay. And at this point I like to back them out a little bit and then screw them back in. I just make sure that everything then is flush with the base. So back it up a little bit. Push it down. Screw it down. Not all the way yet. Do that on the other side as well. Push it, out. Push it down. Okay. And this part. At this point, screw the two down. Okay. And now everything is lined up. And just add the other two screws. For the two slide brackets, you will need uh, two 4x30 screws, same thing, general purpose or wood screws. Okay, and these go one on this side and the other one on the other side. Oh, turn it this way. One on this side and the other one on the other side. There we go. And that's the base assembled. So all you need to do now is get the motor lined up with the axle. Uh, you want the axle to be as center as possible in the hole here, but as long as it doesn't touch, it's, it's not that important. Make sure that the diamond cutting disc 
line is centered, which is the line, that the parting line of the two halves. So align it. I'm a little difficult on the video here. Yeah, now I can see us better. Yeah. Align it that is pretty much that it looks pretty much like that. And then make sure, and that's why you shouldn't tighten the motor mount in, uh, right away in the beginning. Because this may need to be adjusted slightly, depending on the angle. So this, uh, I'm not going to show you in video because this you just need to do it by yourself. Slide the motor over a little bit to the left or right until you have this centered. I'm going to do this right now. This may take a few minutes, take your time, because that ensures that you get a straight cut when you put your arrow through. Okay, once you have this mounted and closed, the chuck closed, just make sure that you don't hear any rubbing sound when you spin it. The diamond cutting disc, it, it's a cheap Chinese disc, so if you look in here and if you spin it, it's not going to be perfectly straight. There's going to be a little bit of wobble in there, but um, when you're cutting the arrows, it really doesn't make a difference. Because if, because if you, when you hold them in place, you always cut at the side that's furthest uh, towards the arrow end, and then it's still going to be straight cut. So now we're going to mount the base to an aluminum extrusion. If you don't have an aluminum extrusion, you just need a piece of wood that's 20 millimeters high. If your wood is higher, just make sure that the top of the base matches with the top of your piece of wood. Then you may have to put a shim underneath it. Uh, that needs to be flush with everything else, like the aluminum extrusion. Let me put it next to it. Uh, which way? This way. This needs to be flush because on the other end there will be a part where you insert the end of your arrow and that ensures that everything is straight when you hit the cutting wheel. So you don't need an aluminum extrusion, I just use it because I have it. But you could use a, a piece of wood, it just needs to be long enough that your arrow, or it, depending on how long you want your arrow to be, has to fit from the cutting wheel all the way to the other end. Okay, since I'm going to use a lumen extrusion, I'm going to use an M5 by 50 screw. And I'm just going to put these through the base at this point. Don't put screws in too fast. Uh, if you print in PLA, this is all PLA because the screws heat up and the PLA gets soft and it makes a mess. Okay, they're far enough out that I can attach my aluminum extrusion nuts now. broken. Okay, and now I'll just slide it onto the aluminum extrusion. Okay, and make sure it's flush with the base here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure it's flush and then tighten the screws. There we 
go, that's flush, and the base is attached. Okay, now we're almost done. Now we will connect the speed controller. First, take the power box and attach it with two M5 by 9 screws to the aluminum extrusion. The distance between the motor and the box it just depends how long the wires are. Uh, for the lid, I should probably yeah, assemble that first. You need two female banana connectors. The uh, speed controller knob comes with the board. And then you should also get a uh, power switch. You don't really need this. If you're okay with just unplugging the unit, I prefer to use a power switch. The way this is wired, if you use the switch, we go from the red, from the positive, go to one of the connectors on the switch, and then the other, this is this one here on top, and then the other lead will then later connect to the speed controller. And the other way, then the negative connector here, and it's just a wire that would also connect to the speed controller. And then this is already comes pre-assembled, and this just plugs right onto the board. Okay, so let's get this in here. And one thing you really should pay attention to is the polarity. Uh, of course, especially for the power supply input, but also the output for the motor, the chuck is specified to only turn in one direction, and that works when the polarity of the motor is correct. You have a little red dot back here, so that's your positive side. If it spins the other way, the chuck will probably come loose during operation, so make sure this is connected the right way. So on mine, it's negative, positive, and the same for the power supply, negative and positive. Speed controller. Put all the wires in here, make sure you don't pinch anything. The uh, lid is designed for M3 by 12 wood screws. This goes over here. Need two, two of these.
The final step is to attach the rear shaft holder. Here you need to make sure that you get the version matching the diameter of your arrow or of your carbon shaft. The shaft should fit in the hole with a little bit of play. So it goes in, you can rotate it easily, but it doesn't have much play. And if we compare this with a 4.2 diameter arrow shaft, it's too much play. So just make sure you get the right version. Installing them is easy. It's just an M5 by 9 screw. You have your uh, nut for the aluminum extrusion. It just slides on top. And then don't tighten it all the way yet. Still want to make, uh, make sure it slides. And then you should measure the distance from the diamond cutting wheel all the way back and then make markings uh, for your arrow length. So I have 28 inches, 28.5, 29, 29.5, and 30. I use uh, 30 for my arrows. And the way I do it is I just line up the rear. And since I only make arrows for myself, I don't have to change this. And that is it. Let me connect the power and then I'll show you. Oh yeah, and this part right here. Let me see. We can, yeah, it is. This part right here, this is the cutting guide. This just slides in. This just slides in from down here while you cut it. Uh, this is tight, so there's not that much play once it's all the way engaged. You may want to add a little bit of loop in here so it slides in easier. Now, this is the development version, so I don't have the cover finished yet. So be careful when you're cutting because this is spinning quite fast and you'll be working right in front of it. Don't wear gloves, you don't want anything getting caught in here. And then I don't think this has enough mass to rip your finger off, but don't wear gloves around rotating stuff. So, but by the time you see this, there's probably going to be a cover to uh, protect your fingers from this part. Now I'll show you how cutting a shaft works. I will not turn the unit on yet. I'll let you know before I do it because it's probably going to get a little louder. Uh, first, set your distance with a rear shaft holder and then screw it tight so it doesn't move anymore. Well, then, if you haven't done already, attach the vacuum adapter. And this can stay here. You can just pull your vacuum out once you're done. Well, this piece, just insert a little bit, give yourself some room. As for the speed controller, uh, the, I'm cutting it at about three quarters to full power. Down here is the motor will not turn. It'll start turning somewhere around here. And com absolute maximum power is when I reach this position. So I'm about half a rotation from off and about a quarter back from maximum power. And that is fine. So now just attach power. I'm using 12 volts. My bench power supply is set to 3 amps max. Uh, the motor will need about 400 milliamps while running. Um, if you just use an on-off switch, it's going to draw the full 3 amps for a short time because the uh, power, the speed controller does not have a soft start. So this will go at full speed. Uh, you, if you have a weaker power supply, it's probably going to tax your power supply quite a bit. You could also just start from zero and then slowly turn this on first and then just slowly increase the speed. It's a lot easier on your power supply. Doing it like this will draw full power. Okay, now I'll show you how to cut an arrow. Uh, you just insert, put one end into the rear shaft holder. The front comes in here. And then if this is the first time you're cutting an arrow or a shaft, I recommend don't go to your final length yet. Take off small pieces from the front until you get a clean cut. Uh, the way I've been able to get a clean cut is you just grab the arrow or the shaft and you apply pressure towards the rear shaft holder. So just keep pushing back and then once this is closed, you rotate it, rotate the shaft while still applying pressure towards the back. Okay, last warning for headphone users, I'm going to turn everything on now. Then I will slide this in and then start cutting. Done. 
side is it. Remove the shaft and then what I like to do is uh, suck out any remaining dust that might be in here. And that is it. We have a nice clean cut.